Welcome to this year's Family Week. It's a period we focus on marriages and the family. And I pray that as we look at one key aspect of marriage and family in this Family Week, the Lord will do something new in our relationships and families. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you for yet another time we want to devote to looking at issues that border on families. Thank you because it's an institution that you raised yourself, and you are interested in the family. I pray that your word and your spirit will go forth even to raise everyone to occupy the proper place that you have designed for us in the family. Let the name of the Lord be glorified in Jesus' name, amen. For our family week this year, we are focusing on relationships. Relationships. When you talk about marriage and the family, even in the larger society, relationship is key. It's a, pre, you know, a critical ingredient that bind people together and cause them to experience the fullness of what God has in mind for us. So it's a critical element that we want to look at. Relationship talks about the way two or more people are connected. So it talks about connection, the way two or more people are connected or the way they behave towards each other. So it talks about connection, relating, and behaving towards each other. Now, having a healthy relationship is one of the hallmarks of a functional marriage or family. If a marriage will be healthy, if a, a family will be functional, then a healthy relationship is key. If we look at the five basic needs of man, you discover that a number of them have to do with relationship. You resolve the aspects of the need for relationship. When we look at the social needs, talking about love, talking about affection, talking about a sense of belonging, they all fall into the realm of relationship. Even when we talk about the need of esteem, which is also one of the basic needs of man, Recognition and respect, they are also ingredients of relationship. And so that's why we want to spend time to look at how we can build a healthy relationship. Knowing the place of relationship in marriage and in the family. We are going to be treating it on a general sense because in course of the week, there will be different emphasis for different classes of people. One Joseph F. Newton man said, people are lonely because they build walls instead of bridges. People become lonely when they build walls instead of building bridges. Relationship is about building bridges. 
somebody also said that in the economy of success, relationship is capital. So if I, someone will succeed in life, relationship is like a capital in the economy of success. John Maxwell also said something. He said, good relationships are more than just the icing on the cake in life. He said, they are the cake. So he said, good relationship is more than just an icing in the cake in life. In fact, it is the cake. So relationship is the cake of life. So I can go on and on to speak about, you know, the importance of relationship. So these things reveal the power of relationship. Now let's look at, first of all, looking at the family and family relationship. Family is a place where we are supported and our ventures and growth is ensured. So it's a place where we are supported, where our pursuit and other connections that we need to succeed are provided. Family is also, particularly when we talk about family relationship, it encompasses the deep connection and interaction between individuals who share emotional ties. There is an emotional ties like kingship bonds and a sense of belonging. So that's why we say we are a family. There's something that is binding us together. There is a bond of kinship. Now these relationships play a crucial role in shaping our identities, particularly for the young ones, particularly for the children in the family. It is this relationship that shapes their identity also their value system and perspectives about life, perspective about things. So it is very, very critical. Relationship also in the family provides a sense of unity, a place where individuals are celebrated, they celebrate their achievements, and also navigate through the challenges that will come and then build lasting memories together. Some of us, we have had opportunity of, you know, we have had situations where we have lost some very beloved ones, maybe mother, father, grandmother, grandfather, and uncles, but you can still reflect on the memories you do not forget the memories. It's because you have built a relationship over time, and this relationship has been able to keep memories that you cannot forget. Now, if we look at some basic scriptures, we discover that God also has a plan for relationship in marriages. In families, if you look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, we find that God said that, and God, the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. Why is it that man is not good for man to be alone? When you are alone, it means that you, you have nobody to connect with. 
nobody to relate with. God saw it that it is not good. So that means a life without a viable relationship is not good. It's not good. So we find that one of the very foundational reasons for marriage was to build a relationship so that Adam will have a relationship. So we find there that when we even go further into Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, we also find that it's still the emphasis on relationship, particularly in the aspect of marriage. He said, therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. So we find that in marriage, we leave one relationship as it were. Not that we are cutting off that relationship, but in marriage we build another. He said a man will leave his father, leave his mother. There have been a bond, a bond of, you know, father, mother, son, mother relationship built over the years. But when the man matures, he needs another relationship that will now enable him to build his own family. So he now leaves one as it were, not severing it, but getting into another intimate relationship with another. And that is the wife. He said the two of them will become one flesh. Talking about connection. In fact, the marriage is the deepest connection or relationship that man can have on earth. It's the deepest human connection. It's the strongest bond that man is meant to have on earth. So we find here that even in the marriage covenant, relationship is key, relationship is critical. And in that relationship, we find that responsibilities are assigned. As we go into the New Testament and see in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, and then verse 33, we find that in the relationship, to make it function and work to its fullness, there are different responsibilities. In Ephesians 5, 25, he says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So it tells you some of the ingredients, one of the key ingredients of relationship. He says, love your wife. So love and the protection of the wife is part of the responsibility of the man in the relationship. Then when you get to verse 33, we define the, re the responsibility of the woman. He said, nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. So the wife is to respect and support the husband in the relationship. So this is the partnership. So relationship is about partnership, defining the different roles. So the, in the first place, we find relationship as a key ingredient is in marriage. And when you take away proper and functional relationship, the marriage breaks down. Another area is in the family life. When a marriage has been consummated, we begin to build family. Children begin to come. Sometimes there may even be other members of the family that lives under the covering of the marriage. If you also look at Psalm 68, 
Verse 6. The Bible tells us one of the reasons why God brings people into families. He said he settled the solitary in families. He said God settled the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains, with the rebellious, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. So our key emphasis here, he said, he sets the solitary in families, the lonely, the ones who are alone. That means that the families is to build a bond of fellowship, of relationship, of connection that breaks loneliness. So one of the reasons for family is to provide relationship so that we are not alone, so that we don't carry the, you know, face the battle of life alone. There is a saying, they call it a Turkish proverb, it says, no road is long with good company. No road is long with good company. But when you are walking a road alone, it becomes long. It becomes scary. Life is meant to be lived in partnership. And that's why we must always value the place of the family. Every member of the family, from the parents to the children to the other people who find that you find yourself in a particular family. God placed you there. And part of the purpose is that so that we don't face life, go on the road of life alone. Another aspect of the family, you know, family life that requires relationship is nurturing. The nurturing relationship. In this, the family... The parents have their roles, like we can find in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. They see the charge of, they say, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. It's a nurturing relationship. For you to achieve this, there has to be a relationship. To train, there has to be a relationship. He didn't just say, say something to the child. He said, train. That means that we need to build a relationship that will nurture the child and now show the child the way it should go. The children also must know that that is one of the roles of the parents. For somebody to be trained, that person must also be open to be trained. That person must also submit to be trained. The same emphasis was made in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. In part of the training, he cautioned. He said, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to rot, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the law. So don't provoke them to rot. Don't treat them in a way that, you know, they become discouraged and, be, be, you know, become aggressive. He said, don't provoke them. You know, it, that means, you know, looking at a relationship here. Relationship is involved. There are terms of relationship. There are considerations. There are elements of relationship, which we might look at a few of them in course of this message. So, but nurture, train, so it will help. Families have a nurturing relationship to train, to disciple with love and guidance. Parents are to serve as mothers so that when the children see, they, they begin to want to be like you. But whether you know it or not, consciously or unconsciously, they also copy you. That's why you must be a proper role model even for them. And the children are to honor and obey their parents as we can also see in Ephesians chapter, one, chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. Another aspect that we want to look at of family 
know, relationship is in the area of family dynamics. When we talk about family dynamics, we are looking at the pattern of interaction and relationship among family members. The pattern of interaction. What are some of the things that build up the family dynamics? One of them is love and respect. Love and respect. In fact, we, when we talk about love here, love is the foundation of all family relationships. Without love, there cannot be a genuine and a fruitful relationship. When we look at the elements, we will look more a little bit about love. When we talk about love, we are looking at the attributes of love. Love is not just what we speak in words, but it's something that shows in action. There are the attributes of love, which we find as patience, kindness, hospitality, and perseverance. All these are attributes of love. In fact, 1 Corinthians 13 treats them in detail about the characteristics of love. So they are attributes of love. So love and respect is a key family dynamic. We also have respect and honor. Honor. Mutual respect and honor for the family, among family members. Even parents should know how to honor and respect their children. Sometimes we just think that it's only the children that should honor their parents. We must also know that they need a supportive environment, a healthy environment. If you look at Romans chapter 12, verse 10, the Bible says we should be kindly affectioned, one to another with brotherly love, in honor, preferring what? One another. These are principles of relationship in the family. Kindly affection, one to another. There, there is that affection, there is that with brotherly love. You know, the Bible calls it brotherly love. It is a natural love that flows because of a relationship. Nobody teaches you under normal circumstances to love your brother, to love your sister. It, it, it comes naturally. It comes naturally. So that is part of family dynamics that will build an affection one for another. These are the things that help to build relationship. We support and care for one another. Just like, you know, Galatians 6, 2 will tell us that we should bear one another's what? Burden. And so fulfill the law of Christ. Why we can do this in a larger church? Because we need to start from the home base. We need to start from the family. Bear one another's burden. You share in the burden of one another. We also have the responsibility to care for elders. Care for the elderly. Some, you know, your parents, as they get old, when you were young, they cared for you. They raised you up. You now, it turns around that you also take care of your parents. There are so many who don't take responsibility of how to take care of their parents. They only concentrate on themselves. Yes, why you would do everything to build your own family, you also know that you have a responsibility towards your elderly parents particularly when they are not strong enough or don't have the means that they can be able to take care of themselves. Even when they do, it is the honor that you are meant to give to your parents. These are all part of family relationship. It's a situation where you are showing piety and a kind of, even though it may not be a payback, may not be the word, but you are becoming, you know, appreciative of the roles they have played and sacrifices they have made in your life. Another family dy dynamic is conflict resolution because there will always be occasions of offenses, misgiving, wherever people exist. So there must be a system of conflict resolution. There must be an environment for forgiveness there must be a, an environment for reconciliation. There must be an environment to seek peace and pursue it, like Hebrew will say. And so 
in Colossians, like Colossians 3, 13 will tell us, we must seek to and create an environment that is able to take care of conflicts, disagreement. Here in Colossians 3, 13 says, forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Yeah. So the scripture is clear. First, they say you forbear. Most times we, have, we lack tolerance. We just want the things our own way. To forbear is that you, you, you are sit where you absorb. You don't react to everything. These are the environments that create for a healthy relationship in the family. You forbear. You, you, sometimes you overlook. And, and so, to some extent, if you are grieved, you forgive one another. If you have quarrel against any, you remember that Christ forgave you. You remember that you also offended Christ. And we will, sometimes we will still offend him. But we go to him and he forgives us. So, it prov these are dynamics that help to have a healthy relationship. The last aspect of the uh, relationship in family is the aspect of spiritual growth and worship. Relationship also helps in spiritual growth, creates an environment for spiritual growth and worship. It helps to have a shared faith. We have an opportunity to have a shared faith. Family worship. Because this cannot function properly. We can't pray together effectively if we don't have a relationship. There's a common saying that the family that prays together stays together. So, it also creates an environment for people to grow spiritually. In the children are nurtured, they grow spiritually, and other members in the family. Even we can learn from one another. Even the parents can learn from the children. So we provide an environment of worship together, pray together, and share spiritual bond. There is a spiritual bond. If you look at when Joshua was speaking about himself and his family, he committed his family in Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. He committed his family. He said, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether it be the gods which your father served, that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorite, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my work and my house, we will serve the law. There was a commitment. That means that there was a, a relationship. There was a connection in serving the law. Joshua was not serving alone. Many families don't care about the faith of other members of the family. The parents just go out, you know, forget about their children. And all the, you know, people that are living in the family, the other worlds in the family. So we must have a system of faith transmission in the family. Like we are commanded in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. It, it talks about the faith transmission. So it, it is an environment. It accrets that. It says, and these words which I commanded this day, shall be in thy heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently to their children, and shalt talk to them when thou sitteth in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So you can see that there was a relationship. So they used the relationship to pass on the faith, teach. When they are walking on the way, they are teaching. Why are they walking on the way? There is a connection. When they are sitting in the house, when they just sitting down, there is a connection. 
When they are lying down, they are sharing. There is a sharing. There is a connection. There is a relationship. So when we don't have a healthy relationship, it blocks the way for us to pass the gospel. And that's why we must ensure as we go through this family week, that we review our relationships in the family, relationship between husband and wife, relationship between the parents and the children and the wards in the family. So it builds a spiritual growth and worship. It also brings encouragement and edification. It provides a forum for encouragement and edification, building each other up. As you can see in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. We see building each other up. So we find there, he says, you know, we have for comfort yourselves together and then defy one another, even as also you do. So comfort yourself, encouragement. We we'll pass through pains in life, pass through some, you know, uncomfortable situation. You find comfort, a place of comfort. Even when you fail out there, there is a comfort zone. There's a place where they don't carry your failure and beam it on your face. We, de you know, we defy one another. You find encouragement and you build one another. Build up the gifts of one another. So these are all the element, you know, one of, you know, the critical power of relationship. Now I'm going to quickly go through some elements of relationship as we try to wind down this message. What are some of the elements of relationship? I'll highlight a few quickly. One is trust. If there has to be a healthy relationship, trust is the bedrock of it. We must build trust. Believe in the others. Reliability, integrity, and intention. We must believe in one another's reliability. It must show that we, you can, they can rely on you. You have integrity and your intentions are not hidden. So we must endeavor to build trust. So it's one of the key elements of, of a relationship. Number two is communication. Communication, open and honest Communication, open and honest dialogue. It involves speaking and listening, active listening. Sometimes many people don't know how to listen. They only speak. And the spiritual, you know, admonished us that we should be slow to speak or swift to hear. So active listening. So there has to be a speaking, open speaking. We speak our hearts as it is, but without offense. The next one is respect. Value each other. Value each other's words and opinion and boundaries. So we learn to respect each other's what each other's opinion and boundaries. And particularly when we are raising children, they have their peculiarities. So we must place value on them in their own peculiar way. Stop comparing them. So we respect them. We should have a mutual regard, consideration, and appreciation. We consider one another and we pre appreciate one another. Those are all parts of respect. Then we talk about love, like I mentioned earlier. 
Love and affection is the rock of any relationship. So we must develop deep emotional bonds. You know, express love through words and actions and physical thought that is appropriate. We express it. The family should be a place where we have unconditional support of love. Unconditional. Nothing attached. If you find a pillar of unconditional love that are built, so it forms a foundation so that a bond is built that has the power to lift us to new heights. That's why, we, like I said earlier, we talked about brotherly love. So love in its purest sense and form is found in the family. Purest sense is, you should be shown in the family. Not the one that somebody says, I love you, you are suspicious. No, this one is not just what you say in the world because it's seen demonstrated. So it gives strength to conquer any obstacle that comes and empowers to take risk. Sometimes we take risk because we know there is a place to fall back to. We pursue dreams because there is a place to fall back to. So in the family life, love is the oil. Somebody said that love is the oil that eases friction. The cement that binds closer together and the music that brings harmony. That's what Fred, uh, Frederick Netzchet said. That in the family life, love is the oil. It eases friction. It's like cement that binds closer together. And it is like music that brings harmony to the ear. These are all elements of love. So we must hold to the key of love. The other one is commitment. Number five element is commitment. It's being dedicated to maintaining and nurturing the relationship. Relationship does not just happen. Relationship does not just grow. Relationship are maintained. Just like I said, you oil it with love. They are maintained. Even when you buy something new, over time you maintain it. So relationships are nurtured. So that no matter the, re the challenges, you are committed to it. Somebody, you can fail outside, but you come home, you find a comfort zone. That is what, that's what, you know, relationship is all about. So we, there is a commitment that no matter what, we are in this together. So that when one suffers, it's just like the Bible talks about when he was describing the body. He said, when one suffers, the other one suffers with it. That's how our body operates. You have pain in one place, it affects every other part of the body. So it's a commitment. Number six is empathy and understanding. Empathy and understanding. We must learn to see things from another's perspective. One of the things that can destroy the relationship is selfishness. When you always see things and consider things just for yourself alone. So we must see things from another's perspective. Empathy involves understanding and sharing the feeling of another person. You understand and share in the feeling of another person. You may not be physically feeling the pain, but you share emotionally. Offering emotional support. 
That's one of the key elements of relationship. That's why people, God wants us to relate so that we can be of emotional support one to another. Another point, number seven, is shared values and interest. If we want to build a relationship, if we want a relationship to last, there must be shared values and what? Interest. There must, we must provide common grounds. Common grounds. There are things that we enjoy doing together. There must be mutual activities and hobbies that strengthen the bonds and create shared experiences. Sometimes you find, you know, they play some games together as a family. The parents and children, and, you know, and it, it builds the bond. There are shared hobbies. If there are opportunities to travel, you travel together. Things that have a common ground. So we must see shared values and interests. The next point, number eight, is patience and tolerance. We can't overemphasize it. There must be patience and there must be what? Tolerance. Relationships will break down when there is no patience. Relationships will crumble. Some families have been severed. Some families are not in talking terms. Some families are in dagger drawn battles. Some are even in courts because they lack patience, they lack tolerance. They, they lack understanding of conflict resolution, like I mentioned earlier. Principle of conflict resolution, a principle of boundaries, knowing the boundaries, the no-go areas. We also have the prince, you know, element of flexibility and adaptability. We must be flexible. Relationship cannot work when we are rigid. When I hold to my gun, we are rigid. It must be my own way or the other or not. In fact, we are taught in scriptures that we don't consider our own things, but we consider the things of others. That's what Philippians taught us. We should consider the things of others, not our own things. We become flexible. We adjust. We can adapt. People pay price to build relationships. People invest into relationship. And so we must see that we must, have, we must have a shared responsibility. What is my input in building this relationship? So I want you to begin to reflect as we close and pray. What is the state of your relationship? Either in a, your marriage relationship, is it growing or is gradually disintegrating? Is the bond getting closer or widening by the day? What of your children? They're losing the grip of them. They're losing the grip of them. We must be active and take responsibility to build a bond. When they were very small, they run around you. But gradually, you can't place the relationship anymore. Sometimes it's only, oh, give me this and that, and that is all. We need to be proactive. We need to take responsibility. We need to be committed to building a relationship. Outside our relationship with God, the other greatest relationship is in marriage and in family. That's why God built marriage. He didn't want you to be alone, even though you are in company. He didn't want you to just be roommates, housemates. But nothing is connecting you. And that's why this year, our prayer is that God will heal relationships. If you look at Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17, you know, the scripture says there, it said, a friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for what? Adversity. We have a friendly relationship. When you build, he says he loves at all times. 
He said the brother is born. There is that connection that even adversity cannot break. So, he, you know, he, the, the, the uh, um, Passion Translation puts it this way. He said, dear friend will love you no matter what. That's because you have built a relationship. He said he will love you no matter what. And a family sticks together through all kinds of trouble. They stick together. Relationship is about sticking together. And I pray that as you go through this family week, may the Lord help you to stick together. Let your relationship be oil. I will close with this last quote. He said, the relationship tree you don't water today cannot provide shades and fruits for you when you need one. Let me say it again before we pray. He said, the relationship tree you don't water today cannot provide shades and fruits for you when you need one. The essence of this week is to water our relationships. That relationship tree that God has built, may you be part of watering it. When, no matter your place in the family, you have a part to play. And I pray that by the spirit of the Lord, we shall be caused to stick Cleave together as a family. Let us pray. I want you to just talk to God in a moment before I pray. I don't know the state of your family. I don't know the state of your marriage. We are going to be reflecting over it this week. We are going to be spending time to pray. But I want you to prepare your heart that God will visit your family relationship again where it has collapsed, that the Lord will build it where there have been walls built over time, walls of crisis and misunderstanding, walls of lack of sensitivity, that the Lord will visit you and heal your relationship. We are looking at the genuine relationships. The relationship that should be a support system that God has placed for you to go through life. I pray that God will bring healing upon every family. I pray that God will bring healing upon every relationship. That where we have been nonchalant, where we have failed to supply the oil that will grease the relationship, the cement that will bind it. I pray that the eyes of understanding will be enlightened. That by the spirit of the law will be properly taught by him to take the right step where we need to forgive one another. May the spirit of forgiveness be released upon you. Let all the bitterness be broken. Let all that we have built up that have served as a barrier be taken away. Let the Lord bring healing upon you and let the Lord bring healing upon your relationship. Let the Lord bring healing upon your family. Let the Lord bring healing upon your marriage. Thank you, mighty God. The Lord, this program will not just be one of the programs who will go through and remain the same. May there be a mark, a testimony of homes, families, relationships, that have grown from one level even into a greater height. Thank you as you visit the church. Even our relationship as brethren, Lord, as you start from the home, may it overflow 
May it overflow with the right principles even into the church. Thank you, mighty God. Let the name of the Lord be glorified as you bless these words and nurture it to produce the required fruits even in our life to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen.